The chaos god Zinch and his followers are the one ruinous power I have little interaction with. While this may change in the future, I can think of only one encounter, besides my time as an order fabulous, that I encountered Zeech, demons, or his followers. The day has started like many others. I had awoken in my barracks, adorned my armor, and proceeded to the temple. I was in what I would call a breather period, not on a mission, but waiting for new orders to come in. In the temple I knelt down on one knee, asking the emperor for glory in the next battle. I was older than many of my sisters at this point, most of us dying in the battle before twenty-five, yet I had not accepted a command post they had offered me. Sure I would be in the halls of the battle sanctum, aiding in the efforts as those above me did, but I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to put my armor to the side, adorning simple robes to proclaim orders to my sisters. I wasn't ready to sit in long meetings, unable or unwilling to keep up with the politics of Terra. I could barely stay awake during those briefings. Most of all, I wasn't ready to stop fighting. I wanted to use my chain sword on many more of the ruinous powers and Xenos of this world, cleanse ships of chaos taint. I wasn't ready to give that up. Perhaps I thought of it as penance for the mistakes of my past, though no one knew what happened on Inquisitor Scully's ship. I was mid-prayer when I felt an almost nervous tap on my shoulder. I sighed in my prayer, finishing it quickly before standing up. As I turned, I found that I had to look down. Never had I seen a sister so short in stature, and her face was a bundle of nerves. What is it that you interrupted my prayer? I asked her, being gentle with my tone. The girl looked like she might implode if I raised my voice. Commander Rogue is requesting your presence, Sister Gwen. I nodded to her, following her out of the temple and to Commander Rogue's office. Once the two of us stepped inside, I stood in front of the desk and the sister to the side. I hope I didn't disturb you, Commander Rogue said, looking up from her report. No, ma'am, I said. What can I help you with? You, Sister Gwen, have had many fights with the Ronas powers, more than many in my rank have, yet you didn't accept your promotion. I don't believe I'm ready yet, I answered honestly. You are alone in that opinion, she said, standing, but I respect your decision. I have called upon you for aid. Aid in what matter? The one matter you have more experience than anyone else in, the Chaos Gods. I have reports of a desolate and dead world, the surface uninhabitable to any but the dead. Yet we have been seeing strange readings from it. Take a look. I accepted the data pad from her, looking it over. The planet was indeed dead, though I noted that the Mechanicus base was deep under the ground. I looked at the readings, seeing multiple photographs of large moving things on the surface. The planet was dead, but they didn't seem to get that memo. Whoever or whatever they are, they are searching for something, Commander Rogue's voice said. My guess is whatever is in this Mechanicus base. Have they been alerted to its location and potential danger? Yes, though they claim to not know what's in it. However, they have requested a team be put together and sent to protect the base. Typical Mechanicus, I said smiling, claim they don't know what's in it, but want protection for it. I'm putting it together a team to be sent there immediately. You are my first choice because of your experience with the Chaos Demons, and therefore you will be active commander while on mission. I don't get to deny that title, do I? Not in the slightest. Remember, it's only active commander. You don't keep the rank once you return. You must suspect demons if you are putting me in charge, I said looking at the photos once more, though I am unaware of this horde style. We have a guess as to what they might be a guess. A guess is how you lose battles. 
how you lose soldiers. Her eyes pierced into mine, but my blue eyes not backing down from her hazel. True, but at this point a guess is all we can do. They seem to know where we place our cameras. Move so we can't get a clear focus on them. It's not corn, then, I said. Plus, not enough red in these photos. I suggest that on your way there, you try and figure out what they are. I looked at the last nut photo, noting a pattern the hordes seemed to hold. I tilted my head, blowing my hair out of my face, before turning the pad upside down. Once I did, and realized the symbol, I dropped the data pad. What is it? the meek sister asked me, seeing how my body had gone rigid. Zinch. Commander Rogue's brow furrowed, her body going rigid as well. I will send for the best. Send for the best of the best, and pray that this is only a minor scheme and not a big plan. I walked out of her office, my throat dry, ready as I would ever be. Commander Rogue had indeed gotten me the best of the best, sisters who were top of their classes and quick thinkers, and even then I was worried about the battle to come. All of us boarded onto an Ark Mechanicus, which was sent by the Mechanicus especially for us, and I was shocked to see who was waiting for us. Tim, Sister Gwen, it has been a few cycle years since we last saw each other. Yes, it has. Is this your ark? Indeed it is. After five years I was given this, and I will be leading you and your company to the planet. Congratulations, I said, smiling. I can think of none other who would be so deserving. You are too kind, Tim said his voice showing that he was smiling if he could. Let me update you on the situation. Tim and I walked to the holopow terminal, turning it on. The demons had almost stopped moving, mere feet from the entrance of the bunker, if it wasn't underground. They are waiting for something, a sister said, making me nod. They are, and I bet I know what it is. Tim turned to me. Those doors are sealed with an enhanced decryption code, correct? Yes, it would take someone who is not Mechanicus weeks to break through. Then they are waiting for the Mechanicus to show, I said without hesitation. Followers of Zinch don't move without purpose. The god himself makes plans that can take generations to fulfill. He is waiting for the Mechanicus to show, to use you to open that door. The room was silent at this information, as it seemed to both sink in with both the sisters and the Mechanicus. What do you suggest we do? Tim asked. My company will go down first. We will see what the horde is made out of. Once we have a better understanding of information, of what that actually is, then only a few Mechanicus will follow us down. Whatever is in the bunker, they want it. Is there an entrance on the surface that we can use? Negative, Temp said. The entrance is three miles down, buried by the destruction of the planet. Send word to the Astra Militarum. We will need men to help dig down to that bunker. Will do. What about you and your company? Won't the demons attack on sight? Not these demons, I said. They will wait and wait for us to reach the bunker. We're not giving them what they want, a sister said to me. No, we won't. We will plan for that. A day later, my sisters and I were on a shuttle, heading to the planet's surface. I was going over the specks of the planet when a sister walked up to me my second in command. Commander, we await your orders. I was going to take some time to get used to. Very well. I walked with my sister, looking at the dozen or so sisters looking at me. Our mission is simple once we hit the ground. 
The horde has moved two miles back, waiting for us to land, and we will take advantage of that. Once we land, I want us to set up a barricade and a circle to defend the entrance, and then we'll figure out what we're dealing with. Why don't we just kill them? A sister spoke, her tone showing her displeasure. This is a small horde. It should be easy to kill them. Then we can dig without threat. Have you fought demons before? I asked, my eyes narrowing at her. When she shook her head no, I continued. This may seem like a small horde, but don't be so stupid to think that this is all there is. Demons cannot enter our space without some sort of portal from the warp. Do you happen to know where that portal is? She seemed to deflate under my cruel tone. I shook her head no again. I would hope not, I said, already tired of dealing with her. When we land, set up the, per the perimeter and prepare for anything. What of you? My second com in command, Heather asked. I will be going out to observe the demons. See what information I can collect. Heather nodded to me. When we reached the planet's surface, we adorned our helmets and stepped out. The planet had an almost desert feel to it, dirt and sand kicking up around us from the shuttle's thrusters and the ground hard against our feet. I led my sisters in formation, weapons drawn to the designated zone, the shuttle going up to retrieve the Mechanicus next. Here, I said, stopping in the zone. With precision, my sisters started to put up the barricade, and I walked a few steps forward. Put my small pistol away, pulling out my sniper rifle I had acquired from the Inquisitor, and looked through the scope. I felt myself cringe at the sight. A few miles away were humans, mortal followers of Zinch, waiting in front of a small horde of demons. I was used to the bloodthirsters of corn, demonettes of Slanish, even nurglings of Nurgle, but what I saw was different from the rest. Across the battlefield was a collection of bird-like demons and misshapen monstrosities. I was happy to see that no lords of change had been summoned, but that could change at any time. What do you see? Heather asked, now at my side. Monstrosities, I answered. Half a dozen fate skimmers, a few changeling, and more pink and blue horrors than I ever wanted to see. Any human followers? A few, I said, lowering my rifle. I doubt they will last very long. Because of the planet. Only a fool would believe that the Chaos Gods actually care about their mortal followers. The demons will either eat them or sacrifice them to bring something bigger into this world. I turned away from the horde, leaving Heather to think over my words, and went back to the barricade. I relayed the information to Arc Mechanicus once the barrier was set up, telling them that it was unwise for any Mechanicus to come to planet side till the Militarium had shown up. That night I watched the horde through my scope, making sure that none came too close, and my sisters made sure that the barricade would be able to handle that horde. They're getting restless, I said, once dawn breaks. The horrors can't hold still. Let them come, a sister said. I'll kill them all. I turned to look at her, seeing it was the one from the shuttle. What is your name? Ariel. Ariel. Why don't you go take a stroll? Go up to the horde and see what happens. My sisters, who had been talking, all fell silent at that. You want me to walk out there, Ariel said, standing. Sure, we can see what happens when you jump the gun. Ariel hesitated at that. You'd send a, f a fellow sister to her death. If that meant I would stop hearing your proclamations. Yes. Hariel stepped up to me, now squaring me off. Heather said something, but Hariel didn't listen. You've been pissing me off since the briefing, Hariel said. You're so calm, almost like you don't take this seriously. Why would Commander Rouge put you in charge when I could have fixed this situation in a few minutes? Oh, 
Are you questioning my leadership? You're only acting, Commander. There are far more deserving than you. I would be... At that, I slammed my fist into her helmet, making it rock around her head. A cry from my sisters was heard, but Heather quieted them. Haria was dazed by my actions, holding her helmet as she tried to collect herself. Without missing a beat, I grabbed the back of her armor and started to drag her. Her cries of surprise did nothing to me as I dragged her outside the barricade and about a mile out. You're so sure. You can fix this quickly. Go ahead, I said, dropping her. I tossed a heavy blaster into her lap and walked away. Fix this. Then we can all go home. I walked back to the barricade, pulling my sniper rifle out and held it up. I watched Dario stand up, heavy blaster in hand, and take a few steps forward. As if on cue, a blue horror ran at her, and she shot it with precision. I could almost see the smirk on her face, but I smirked when she let out a shriek. The blue horror went down all right, but then divided into two pink horrors. Calmly, I lined up my shot, shooting both as they jumped at her. Then Hario was running back to the barricade, stopping when she fa came face to face with me. Disobey or disrespect me again, and I will leave you to those demons. Do you understand? I only got a nod from Ariel, who scuttled into the safety of the barricade. Heather moved so she was standing next to me. Effective, she said. Let's just hope it sticks, I said, looking up as the shuttle communicated it was inbound. Let's get to work. Tim, in true Mechanicus fashion, ignored my warning and had taken a shuttle down the moment the barricade was finished. It took another week for the militia to arrive, and the moment they landed, I had them start digging. I set up my platoons so that way all, all angles would be protected, but my sights were still on the horde. One night we heard screams of pain and fear, making even Ariel wake up from her slumber. Heather appeared at my side, looking out to where the screams came from. What was that? The end of the mortal followers, I said simply. I felt a chill go up my spine, and I knew the worst was still to come. While the militia dug, I worked strategy with Heather and Tim. And you're sure you don't know what's in the bunker? I asked again, tired of Tim's lies. No, I don't. I nod to Heather, who left to go check on the militia, and I turned to look at Tim. Tim, I know when you're lying. I spent five years with you. Don't think you can pull the wool over my eyes. I will ask you one last time, what is in that bunker? I heard his gears turn as if he was pondering the question, and finally spoke. An Imperator class titan? You're shitting me. I wish I was. Ever since my return from the Inquisitorship, I was tasked with finding it. I searched thousands of worlds trying to find it. It seems that Chaos found it first. How has it laid dormant for so long? It hasn't been dormant. It's been sending signals, but the ground hid those signals, making it impossible for even us to hear it. We need to get it out of here. Forget just defending it. We need an evacuation plan. My ship is in orbit. It can handle the load. We only have to get it to the Ark. You say that as if it's a simple task. Now as if we have a horde of demons waiting for us to get into that vault. If anyone can handle them, it is you, Gwen. I think that's the nicest thing anyone has ever said to me. That you've ever said to me. It took weeks to dig to the bunker's entrance. I lost track of how many, but the moment we did, I heard a cry in the distance. I pulled my platoon together, going over the plan. Once Tim opens those doors, that horde will come running. They want what is in there. We have to defend it long enough for the ship to teleport it out of here. 
"'What is so important in this bunker?' Ariel asked. Her attitude had changed in the past weeks, which I was grateful for. I decided to be honest with them. A titan. The shock was evidence of the silence I was hearing. We are on a rescue mission. Defend this position. Not a single demon past this barricade until that titan is on the ark. Understood? I watched as Tim walked down the, star the spiral staircase we had built, going to the entrance. His mechanical hand moved along the surface of the bunker, feeling the machine spirit inside before he walked to the console. At this I turned to the front line, shouldering my rifle in preparation. My platoon was prepared as well, their weapons ready to shoot when told to. When I heard the first lock click, the horde screamed as if they could hear it as well, and charged. Fire when ready, I yelled at my sister. The militia had been assigned to protect him, so it was just us at the front line. Shot after shot was fired when the horde within range, though only mine had the accuracy that was needed. I focused my shots on the horrors, knowing that they could do as much or more damage than the large ones. Felt like an endless army was running towards us as Tim got more and more locks open. Hours seemed to go by before I felt the tremble of the ground. I moved my scope from the whore to the horizon, seeing what was causing the ground to quake. By the Emperor, I heard Heather whisper next to me, and I understood. Tim, as in the communication device, please hurry up. I can't just hurry it up. This requires a delicate hand. We'll be delicate and fast. A lord of change just entered the battle. I could almost hear Tim's hands move faster now, the locks opening faster. How many bloody locks did you put on this? I yelled at him, focusing my scope to shoot what I could. Only three hundred. I almost rolled my eyes at that as the blaster fire around me picked up, the horde running towards us faster now. My rifle was holstered as I pulled out my own heavy blaster. The need for finesse had gone. My blaster fired as fast as my sister. Now the horde was at our barricade. Sometime today would be nice, I screamed at Tim, shooting a change caster in the face. I heard the final lock click open and the bunker doors open. Transport is ready, Tim yelled at me, but I was currently throwing a pink horror up into the sky so Heather could shoot it. Get the Titan out of here, I yelled back, focusing on the battle. I tried to ignore how the ground was now shaking as the Lord of Change was getting closer, but I could now see its long neck and bird face much clearer than before. I heard the recognizable sound of teleportation, meaning that the Titan was now off-planet. The Lord of Change screamed in anger and started to run, charging the barricade. Retreat! I screamed at my sisters, grabbing Hariel and throwing her back. I s heard them running down the stairs as my heavy blaster fired, clearing their exit. I didn't use the stairs, knowing by now the ruined horrors and my shots had destroyed the stairs. I turned to jump, and I saw the militia being teleported off-world, but noticed the unmistakable red that was Tim. Tim was being overrun by horrors, his own pistol going off as fast as it could, and the guard who was supposed to be protecting him running away scared. I didn't even hear my scream of his name, running to the area he was and jumping without a second thought. The ground came faster than I was prepared for, making my legs shoot in pain, but I ignored it as I ran for Tim. My blaster abandoned, I pulled my chain sword out, not caring who I was cutting in half as I ran to my friend. Once I got to him, I noticed the horrors had ripped parts of him apart, his voice now in pain. Without a second thought, I grabbed him, putting him on my shoulder fireman style. My blade cut through horrors as they tried to overwhelm me as I ran to the exit zone. 
Commander, where are you? Heather's voice came through my helmet. She had just reached the ship, seeing I wasn't there. Still on planet, I said. Need an exit now. Try to hold still. I felt the familiar pull of the teleporter, my eyes looking as the Lord of Change flew right at me. I willed the Emperor to give me strength as I threw my chain sword at the Lord of Change, hitting it in the eye. Its scream of pain was the last thing I heard from that planet, because seconds later I was back on the Ark. We need a medic, I screamed at the Mechanicus, handing him to their healers. Don't die on me, Tim. I whispered to him before they, he was taken away. Filled with rage, I pulled my helmet off, looking at the militarium. My eyes focused on one, the one who had been a coward and left Tim behind to die. Heather was calling to me, asking me if I was okay, but all I could hear was the blood pounding in my ears. I walked over to the man the rest moving away like he had some kind of disease or they were terrified by the look on my face. Without hesitation, I punched him hard, not caring if I cracked his skull. Coward, I said to him. Heather took me away from the scene, checking to make sure I didn't have any wounds of my own. But all I cared about was if Tim survived. Thank you for joining me for this video on Zinch, the Chaos God of Change. If you liked the video, please give it a like sub, subscribe for more Warhammer content in the future, comment down below your favorite part, and I hope to see you in the next one.